Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a detailed look at the letter from the chairman from May 2022. Chris Roberts has finally given us another letter and talks about his thoughts on the project, um, trials and tribulations, the future of Star Citizen, studios, plans for events, things like this. This video is going to be a summary and highlights of this rather meaty amount of information that Chris gave us. I have also done a dedicated video on the section where Chris talks about the road to Alpha 4.0 and the release plans for Alpha 3.18 and um, the sort of release plans for the rest of this year. So check out that video because the information from that will be omitted largely from this video. Chris started the letter talking about 2021 and how the project did during that time. He said COVID had caused various issues since 2020 and continued into 2021 and to some extent even now and um, they're still sort of um, having issues with COVID because they're only just starting to get back in the office in force. Though they did have reasonably good working from home setups, they do want spontaneous collaboration and team building that can only come from working in person and near each other. Chris has been working a lot in the UK and on Squadron 42 as we focus on finishing and polishing the content and features of what will be an epic narrative adventure. Chris feels that working from home and COVID may have caused some issues with bugs and some slower releases in 2021 and 2020, but has given them some insight into some better work practices. We have altered our global work policy to allow for flexi and hours and a hybrid of in-person and work from home, depending on both an employee's and manager's needs, with emphasis on being cognizant of our employees' life situations. He's proud of what they've accomplished in 2021, though, with the Xeno Threat, the first dynamic event in-game, four major patches, 3.13 to 3.16, and that gave us um, ship the station docking, Orison, that Crusader basically has a real gas giant, medical mechanics, looting, personal infantry, jump town, and much, much more. In 2022, they are seeing over 2,000 players joining each day, and daily active users for the game has grown massively. Later this year, they should hit the $500 million mark in lifetime revenue, 4 million total accounts, and over 1 million unique logins. Chris acknowledges that the game's scope has changed massively since its inception 10 years ago. Planets being hugely in-depth and explorable wasn't even considered back then, but now it is a firm reality of something we can actually do in the game now. Star Citizen is much more of a universe simulator than just a space combat and trading game. Chris said, many that have financially supported Star Citizen do not care about profits or quarterly earnings. They just want the best and biggest game possible, one that lives up to their expectations and dreams. While that is no small task, it's something that is far easier for myself and everyone at CIG to pull all our effort into as it is a privilege to be challenged artistically and be supported financially in this manner and I am immensely grateful to have so many people put so much faith in all of us. Chris then talked about the road to Alpha 4.0 and sort of what's happening release wise for 2022. Basically we're going to have a meaty 3.17.2 patch at the end of Q2, a 3.18 patch um, is then going to contain salvage cargo updates and full persistence and much more at the end of Q3. And potentially at the end of the year, we'll have 4.0 and server meshing in a sort of prototype testing version. And um, that's if it all goes well. Now, uh, that wouldn't be for a live build. That would be in testing for like Evocati, maybe um, to some PTU stuff. Please check out my dedicated video on that if you haven't already, because there's a huge amount of information there. Studio expansion was the next major topic. Chris said, not only are we building two hugely ambitious games to rival anything released by the biggest AAA studios, but we've had to build the company to build the technology and make the games from scratch at the same time. They've come from a handful of devs to 780 people on staff, plus an extended family of over 130 more working closely with them from Turbulent in Montreal, with many more joining in the coming months. They have a team that hires the best talent possible, helping get around 300 positions filled in the last 18 months. In 2022, they're going to continue to grow all departments, increasing their headcount to approximately 840 and that's going to help bring them close to release for Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. To accommodate this ever-expanding workforce, Clan Imperium have some new studios and they're only a couple of months away from uh, opening them hopefully. A new massive studio in Manchester, England. This has three floors in the Manchester's goods yard. Over 90,000 square 
feet, as well as two stages in the adjacent Manchester Studios and Bonded Warehouse Complex, a dedicated motion and performance capture, 4,500 square foot stage with a suite of changing rooms, a green room, a machine room, scanning room, and a viewing gallery along with a small stage for global video production, which will all have a dedicated set and be well set up for filming a vast array of content for Star Citizen and later on Squadron 42's launch. This is incredibly exciting for me because they're basically upping the production costs and how easily accessible it is for them to make videos, to record motion capture stuff to add wild lines they can do a huge amount just in in studio very quickly and very easily frankfurt has a large studio expansion but more modest when compared to the uk one um the frankfurt studio is now going to be thirty thousand square feet over two floors in the one building very nice building there doubling their space basically in frankfurt they're also looking at the next location for their austin studio for potential move in late next year as they need more space there uh, and then they're going to look up potentially upgrading the la studio chris says we are building long-term homes that will provide the facilities to keep the universe alive and expanding for decades to come and we do know that they've signed at least a 10-year lease in that uk studio uh, chris moved on to talking about citizen con so they've decided not to hold a physical citizen con this year due to uncertainty with covid moving into new studios and the focus on 3.18 and server meshing for the persistent universe along with them trying to finish out squadron they are however hoping to run a physical one next year they are going to be celebrating a virtual citizen con this year though and it's the 10th anniversary so chris said one difference to last year is that there will be no keynote gameplay demo to headline this event as this will pull valuable resources away from our game development teams that are working hard to get persistent streaming gen 12 and vulcan and server meshing into your hands not to mention also delivering more of the content and gameplay that has proven so successful in bringing new players and retaining old and new users alike Instead, CitizenCon will be a celebration of you, the community, with presentations and panels from our developers to share with you the progress that we're making and the near future of what you can expect from Star Citizen in the year ahead. And as I noted back in my December 2020 letter, we're still going to be quiet on the Squadron 42 front until it's ready to start the release campaign for that. And we're not quite there yet. Know that progress is coming along nicely, but we're not quite ready to pull the curtain back on Squadron yet. So, no Squadron 42 stuff at CitizenCon this year, as far as we're aware. Um, and it does sound like they're not going to have a um, sort of gameplay demo there. But you're going to see lots of in-engine and gameplay stuff as well when they do presentations. They're just not having a headline gameplay demo like we had with uh, the Pyro demo in uh, 2021. But... I'm quite happy just to see lots of presentations, if they update us on ships, if they update us on the quantum system and all that sort of jazz, I'm more than happy. They are planning on starting Bar Citizens off again with an international Bar Citizen Day and Bar Citizen World Tour mid-June, focusing on events simultaneously near all of their studios for the community to get together. But they want Bar Citizens to be back in force and well supported even after that. I'm looking forward to them announcing more. It's looking to me like they'll probably start this um, when they were talking about mid-June and uh, that sort of stuff. 11th or 12th of June. 10th 11th 12th of june that sort of area i'll read out chris's final thoughts on the letter in detail as i think it's a good way of wrapping up while some of you will no doubt be disappointed to hear the news about no physical show and no keynote demo at citizen con the team and i felt it was much more important that we focus on making development progress so that we could maintain the pace of delivery we've been hitting since alpha 3.14 this year is a big one for all of us on star citizen you can expect to see invictus launch week moving into the clouds of crusader the promise of persistent entity streaming making its way into the verse as well as big game-changing features like salvage physicalized cargo bounty hunting version 2 new events and missions enhancements to jump town ships i know you're waiting on like the corsair vulture and hull c as well as more quality of life and new player onboarding improvements to make star citizen even more playable and welcoming than it is today and that is without mentioning pyro and server meshing which we are aggressively working towards letting you test by the end of the year depending on how difficult it is to get persistent entity streaming stable we think you will all rather be playing this new content and than hearing about it so we will use our time this year to focus on development and delivering that tech to you 
as well as features and content that you're waiting for. The developers at CIG tend to get a lot of attention, which is well deserved, as it's the most talented development team I've ever worked with, but there are a lot more people beyond development at Cloud Imperium Games. As they say, it takes a village. Without our publishing and live ops teams, the servers would not be up 24-7 in the cloud, and you would not be able to download or play Star Citizen. Without our quality assurance teams, tirelessly testing and feedback, Star Citizen would be unplayable. Without our back-end and web teams at Turbulent, you would not be able to log on and have a website to read news and information or a forum to participate in healthy debate on pledge or launch Star Citizen. Without our studio experience team, looking after the health of our organization, there would not be a creative environment as ambitious as Star Citizen. Without our financial and legal teams, we could not have built a company as unique and groundbreaking as CIG. Without our marketing and community teams, there would not be any communication about our plans, no dazzling traces to tease and excite about the future content, and no real back and forth between the community and CIG. Without our customer support and player experience teams, you would not get the help you need, nor the ability to give feedback to on the game in any way that could be quantified. Quantified. Without our IT department, we would not be able to work together, whether in the office or from home, nor would we be able to compile code or create beautiful assets. Without our people department, there would be nobody that is there to hire, listen, guide and help our staff. And without all of you, with your enthusiasm and patience, there would be no Star Citizen Squadron 42 or Cloud Imperium games. As we move closer to achieving the critical milestones outlined above, we cannot help but feel an immense amount of appreciation for each and every one of you who shares in the collective dream of Star Citizen. The path ahead of us is more vibrant than ever, but in some ways the collective journey together, the moments and fun that people have along the way as we build Star Citizen together is as rewarding as the ultimate destination. The real development was the friends we made along the way, guys. They didn't say that. That, that is just what he meant though. And that is what makes this game and community special. From all of us at Cloud Imperium, we will see you at Bar Citizen, Digital Citizen Con, and in the PTU. Boom, that was the letter from the chairman. I really like what Chris was saying there and the way he was saying it. It seemed to have real self-awareness of the issues with the project and a transparency of what they're working on now and how the releases are changing for this year. And I hope that Chris is humbled by some of his delays and the expansion and the sort of scope of the project and how it's changed and the way the community have reacted to that. They've been very forgiving and they've been very um, forthcoming with financial support and patient, I suppose. There was a slow 2021 with COVID, but a lot of stuff still got done. There are massive office expansions, a virtual citizen con coming, uh, giant milestones are on the horizon, and hopefully Chris is going to be engaging with the community more regularly again with letters, videos, and posts. Obviously, that new studio that they've got in the UK may allow for that. But what do you think? Were you happy with the letter from the chairman? Did you feel it was concise and sincere with their confidence in their development? Or do you worry that it's just what we wanted to hear and a load more hot air and we're just going to see loads more delays to all of what was talked about here? Are you expecting 2022 to be a fantastic year for Star Citizen or more of a slow plod? Will Cloud Imperium be able to attract and keep talent with their new studios at a much larger scale? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I saw NordVPN once. I was in a forest late at night. I'd got lost and then I heard it and an earthly sound as if the wind was talking to me. NordVPN.com slash board gamer. Then I saw him run at me. He was so free, almost as if he could be anywhere in the world. America, France, Australia. He was so secure, protected in layers of encryption that I could not even fathom. So majestic. Well, I heard that NordVPN was as big as a bear and could kick your head off. I've also heard that, which is why, just in case, I go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer to appease the beast. You can find links to that down below. If you're looking for a new god, why not try NordVPN? Every month we have a ship giveaway, this time for May to celebrate Star Citizen Alpha 3.17's release. We're giving away three prizes to three separate winners. An Origin 100i Luxury Starter Ship, a Consolidated Outland Nomad Versatile Freighter, and an Aegis Avenger Titan Multi-Roll Ship. They all come with lifetime insurance and access to play Star Citizen 
To be in for a chance of winning one of those three prizes, just comment on any of my videos made during May. More details in the description below. Thank you so much to everyone that watches, shares, comments, and likes my videos. It really does help the channel grow. Be sure to subscribe for more content. If you would like to go to the extra mile in supporting the channel, there is Patreon links below. There's a join button under my videos as well on YouTube that makes you a highly elite channel member with some extra perks and exclusive content. There's also the thanks button, which straight up gives us money and you can leave a highlighted comment. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great May 2022.